Hi, my name is Dennis Crowley. How are you guys doing? Um, I'm one of the co-founders and currently the CEO of a company called Foursquare. Do you guys know Foursquare? There's a lot of people that do? OK, sweet. Uh, has anyone, I have a lot of slides, like an obscene amount of slides. So please bear with me as I race through them. And I, I imagine that some of you have seen some of them before. But I always start this story off uh, in the same way. Um, Uh-oh. Usually not this way, though. I'm working on it. OK, I'm sorry. Well, as you can see, <laughs> that shouldn't count towards my time. <laughs> oh, so anyway, so let me kind of continue on with, uh, with my spiel here. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that most of you guys know what the Foursquare stuff is. You know, we've been building applications for I've been at it about a year now. We're building things that allow people to, to check into places. And I feel like that's kind of a, a common thing now. Um, I've been doing this for a couple years. Um, I think the first time I was at Ware was pitching the dodgeball stuff maybe like five years ago that we eventually ended up bringing to Google. Um, and from some of you that knows that story uh, and how the kind of the check-in space has evolved over time, you know, I think ultimately found that like, the, the way the check-ins are working now, um, like as, a, as people are, are checking in, there's really not as much value as you would, you would hope in being so, right? Like it was, we went through this phase where it was of a lot of value just to know where people were and just to kind of have the sense of where your friends are. And I think people get tired of that over a while. And especially if, um, you know, if you're not playing with 10 or 20 or 30 different people, if you've just got one or two different people on, this, on these systems, they're not really working as well as you'd hope they would. So one of, one of the things that we ended up end, you know, doing with Foursquare from the very beginning was you know, trying to build game mechanics into things. Like, how can you really change the experience so that there's more reason to check in? Um, and so if you guys have played with it for a sense, like every time you check in, there's various rewards that we give out. You know, sometimes you get score for doing things. Sometimes you unlock points. Sometimes you unlock different badges for doing certain things. Um, and the thinking is, like, if you can make every check-in kind of fresh, almost like pulling the wheel on a slot machine, then you know, users are going to be more interested over time, especially as you get people through that like, very early phase of of, um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm just starting on a new social network. I've only got one friend. Like, there's no reason to like, continue yelling into that social network if no one's going to hear you. So we're thinking if we can make the check-in process kind of a one-player experience, then you know, that's a lot more entertaining for people. Uh, or if we can take a one-player experience and make it a kind of a compelling two-player experience, and that gets really interesting for folks. Let me start this up now. Uh-oh. Whoops. As my slides are being edited, there you go. Quick. All right, we're just going to do it this way then. This is the, the lesson learned. Do not br bring your, uh, your own laptop to the party. Uh, so this is our office, the crappy little space down in downtown Manhattan. Uh, for people that have used Foursquare before, these screens probably look pretty familiar. You know, you're, you, you know you've got a general list of where your friends are and what they're doing. Um, and kind of, oh, they're all kind of cropped too. Um, but you know, on the left, you get the old school model of what we're doing with Dodgeball with basic check-ins. And on the right, like what we're doing with Foursquare. You know, really not that different, but five or six years later. And it's not, you know, it's not different than a lot of what other folks have been doing over the last couple of years. I mean, BrightKite's built check-in systems. Google's taken a couple stabs at it. You know, Loop's been around for a while. Um, and you know, generally, when we explain these things, it's like, how do you, it's, it's like, uh, you know, Twitter with location, which is kind of ironic because Twitter's going in that direction too. But you know, it's like a good way to kind of get your location out to a lot of these different folks. Um, so a couple things I want to blow through super fast now. And I always start with the story because it's like the thing that really got me on this mix. It's like, how do you turn life into a game? And I always start with this example of like Nike Plus. Have you guys ever used this? Anyone? Awesome. Uh, so basically, you get this little white thing, and you stick it into your iPod, and the red thing, and you stick it in your shoe. And as you run, it measures you, and it gets these metrics based on the things you're doing, right? And you can set up these challenges. You compete with your friends. Um, and you know, the Nike Plus has this really interesting you know, model behind it, where you know, it's this one thing that can like, encourage you to get out of bed on a rainy morning and go running, because if you don't, your friend might get points for it, you know, or you won't get points for it. And really, like, you know, they use game mechanics in such a way to encourage like, this behavior that takes place in the real world. Um, you know, they give you like little points and virtual badges for, you know, for accomplishing races or racing against your friends. And you know, these little trophies are, are things that I've won for virtual challenges I've had against people. And then they let you like map these runs against different people. And you've got people, this is Manhattan, you've got people doing all over the city, mapping their runs and kind of doing this little social community about where people are exercising. And you know, this is the story I tell all the time. Like this one time I went running across the Williamsburg Bridge and I spotted this like Super Mario power-up that someone spray painted like on the ground and ran over it thinking, you know, I should get an extra guy for, for that. I should get, you know, 
200 extra points for that or something. You know, and it just got me thinking, like, you know, this, these things that you do every day, whether it's like meeting up with the same old people or going to the same old restaurants or exercising and running the same route, like you can make them different and more interesting by applying game mechanics to them. So I did some, you know, Googling around and, you know, it's like a street art project that people are spray painting these things all over the place. But what if there was some kind of like geotagging to it? So if this eight mile loop, which I haven't run in like three years, um, you know, actually had power-ups scattered through the morning, and I was competing with all the other people in my neighborhood to go pick them up. Like, that takes the regular, you know, the regular old run and kind of, uh, you know, drain of exercising, it makes it a little bit more interesting. And so a lot of the thinking that drove the Foursquare stuff is like, well, how can you do that for nightlife and socializing? How can you do that just for like all the cultural things that are available to us all the time? Like, how do you use software to encourage people to see more movies, to, you know, to read more books, just to be more interactive with, you know, with the physical world? So that's kind of where we are. You know, how do you use software to change behavior? Um, and like, you know, the side effect that we're starting to learn from this is like, it's all about this digital candy. You do things, you get digital candy. Um, you know, it's like the equivalent of giving grown-ups like gold stars for doing interesting things. Things. So here's the screenshot once again. It's like a list of all where all your friends are. Um, you know, uh, open my phone here, and you get a list of all the places that are nearby. You guys know, you guys know how this stuff works. Like you check into various places. Um, you can see. I think when I took this screenshot, it was like 19 people over here. And now there's like 100 people checked into the room. So thank you, every one of you. Um, and every time you check in, you know, we're, we're trying to give these rewards out. This one, you know, in particular, it has, uh, you know, you get cu a couple points for, you know, being your first stop of the day, or maybe you've never been to this place before. And I think a lot of you folks know about the, the game mechanics we have, like the the mayor mechanics. So this person's been here more than anyone else. Um, you know, we allow you to see who the other folks are here. We let you interact with those people too. Um, but kind of the core of what we were getting at and what's been really successful is this like digital badging system, like giving people little rewards for doing, you know, a little bit of nothing. So you get, you know, you get these photogenic badges for finding places with photo booths. You get the karaoke badge for going to, you know, singing karaoke three times in a month. Uh, you get the far, far away badge for, you know, tr traditionally, you know, traveling 25 miles outside of your, uh, you know, outside of where you normally hang out. So, like, you're getting these little digital collectibles, but you're earning them in a sense. Like, they're based off of, like, real-world accomplishments. Um, and so the, for the people that look at this and say, this is silly and stupid, it is, but people dig it, and, you know, we've all gone through the space in our life anyway. And what we're seeing is that we can make these badges that actually start to change user behavior. Like, we made this gym rat badge just on a whim, and we find out that people go to the gym more often because of it. Um, we made this, uh, this pizza badge. We're going, you got to go to 30 different pizza places, which is kind of a hard thing to do, and people organize pizza to crawls around it, so they go out and they explore their cities in different ways because they have different motivations for doing so. And then we kind of get crazy with it. It's like, well, we'll make the pizza badge, we'll make uh, a badge for going to different art galleries, and people go out and do that. You know, we find a whole bunch of parents that are using it to check into playgrounds to, you know, alert their friends about play dates. So we end up making playground badges. You know, we, piece, we see people using it to announce that they're at birthday parties and checking in, like, happy birthday, Brady, for example. There we go. Uh, and so we made, like, a birthday party badge where if you shout out, you know, X amount of times that you're at a birthday party, you unlock it. And people go go nuts over these little things because they're earning them and they're, they're changing their behavior to try to get them. Um. And what we also started doing is like adding this little element of tips so people leave content behind for other users to find. And generally, like you'll check into a restaurant or something, and you'll get a piece of advice over what to order or how to address the bartender or like what's the next best thing to do or what's around the corner from here. And you know, pe people are leaving these, these little nuggets of content for their friends to find, for random people to find. And you know, it hasn't just been like users leaving it for users. We're doing these partnerships with Bravo TV and MTV, where you know you've got these brands and these media companies that want to get involved too, and they're leaving content around for other users to discover as well. Um, and so it's like we're building this ecosystem that we're finding has lots of interesting uses in it. And this is you know this is an old quote, and I've showed this a bunch of time, but it kind of sums up the essence of what a lot of the Foursquare stuff is. Um, you know, by using these game mechanics to push people in, in certain directions, like you know people feel like they're being more interesting, or the game is encouraging them to to live more interesting lives. Um, you know, the side effect of a lot of this stuff is we're collecting a lot of interesting data about where people go. And this is, you know, this came up in some of the Twitter slides, but it's not just about where you've been, it's like what you were doing there, who you're with, and the patterns at which you hang out with people over time. So we're starting to expose a lot of this in our API that gives people access to not just the places that you go, not just the types of places you go, but the types of people that you hang out with when you get to those places. And so we're getting to this point where we can really start building like super interesting social apps on top of a lot of this stuff. You know, a lot of these examples are just me going out to bars and restaurants. People, you know, we've heard stories of people using this to track down where they've lost their credit cards, to track down where, you know, their credit cards were stolen, to track down, you know, to track the, the number of times that they're doing yoga in a given month. So people are finding their own uses for this stuff within like the little structure that we've created. And the hope is, you know, you want every night to feel like this a little bit, 
like, yeah, you know what? I went across town. I hung out with some new people. You should be leveling up in these types of things. You should be, get the same type of feeling that you get from Legend of Zelda, from like a six-hour Zelda session. You know? And how do we take that and translate it into like a really amazing you know, Saturday night out or like a Sunday afternoon exploring the city? Um, and you know, I think we're, ba we're taking baby steps to get to a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, we also spit back some of the stats of the users, and you know, if you look at this stuff, it doesn't look dissimilar from a lot of the stuff that's going on with Nike Plus. Uh, so you can see how that inspiration has kind of made its way into the product. So Act Three is like, how do you take those that digital candy that people are earning, like the points and the badges, the membership, and turn them into real-world rewards? These are all new slides, so thanks. Uh, thanks for dealing with all the old ones. So this is kind of a common scene where, you know, if you're a Foursquare user, you become the mayor of something, or you steal the membership away from someone else, and people, you know, people feel some kind of. Um, you know, some pride about owning the mayorship of their local coffee shop or their local pizza place, and the users compete over this stuff. And you, you see it on Twitter, you see people talking trash to other people that took the mayorship away from them. And it's like this really interesting ecosystem that it lives even outside of the product. Um, you know, we hear this stuff all the time, you know, uh, someone stole my membership, so I left, a, you know, leapt out of bed, went down to the bar, checked in again just so I could get it back, which is kind of crazy, but crazy in a good and interesting way. Um, this is one of our investors, Fred Wilson, from, you know, I think this tweet's from a while ago, October. Um, but, you know, the interesting part of Foursquare where, you know, you've got your old regular standby places, but in order to go and collect those points or collect those badges to win back a membership, it can knock you out of your regu regular routine, and that's a pretty powerful thing. Um, so what we started seeing this past summer was venues adopting this, you know, and we didn't play any part in this. Like we just saw venues going out and like hanging up flyers saying, "If you're the mayor, you get something for free." Uh, then we started seeing people, you know, write down the name of the mayor on the back of, you know, on the, the blackboard behind the bar or leaving it outside of their coffee shop. Um, and you know, we look at that and we're like, oh, "Man, we should really embrace this in a certain way." So we started building almost like a little digital couponing system within the app. So you know, if you're using it, sometimes you see these little special flags pull down, and you click on it, and it'll tell you about an offer at that particular place, or maybe an offer that's nearby. And they're all about like frequency. Like, say that you've checked in here five times, you get this. Say that you've been here with three different people, and then you get this. You know, if you're the mayor of this person, you're entitled. You know, if this mayor of this place, you're entitled to something special that other people don't have access to. Um, and you know, this came in just yesterday. You know. One of the hardest things for a startup to do is get outside of this, like, the tech ghetto of the 100,000 you know, 100, early adopters. And I got this tweet from these girls that I stalked on their Facebook page. And uh, it turns out, you know, they sent me, like, oh, my god, I was, we were out at Napa for a bachelorette party, and we got a Foursquare special uh, you know, for being at one of the places, and we got a free wine tasting. I'm like, that's fantastic, because you are real people using this, and you're not just, like, early adopters. And that's, like, one of the big changes that's gone on in the last year. Um, so, you know, we're looking at like all the interesting stuff. Like we're getting crazy specials from people. It started off with, you know, we, we talked to the press like free coffee, free, free pizza. Like these are the PG-13 things. Like no, they're free vibrators and 15% off medical marijuana. You know, the cemetery that wants to give you a tour and your 100th check-in. That's crazy, but like why not? If there's people checking in there, you know, the lawyer in Miami that wants to, you know, bail people out of jails and like. In one of the weird things you're seeing in New York is all these like meta venues pop up, so people compete over being the mayor of the taxi line outside of like the JetBlue terminal because it's everyone knows that it's like an awful place to be. And you know we get people that are like I want to reward the mayor of the taxi line with a free ride home. And so like is this a new way of thinking about a lot of this stuff? Like how do local merchants connect with with their customers and doing it through social media? And there's something like very very interesting here that we're just really scratching the surface of. You know we've gone basically from this where you know venues are are just scrapping this stuff outside to, you know, hey, now we're distributing formal stickers, like, and this is like making it a little bit more formal on our part, to these things where you walk into a casino and people have printed these big Foursquare signs. Or, you know, this is like a real billboard on the Las Vegas Strip, like advertising, this is the mayor of the mall. And I mean, these things are getting, it's crazy. Like, we're way over our head with some of this stuff. Um, and so you look at, like, you know, this is the basic model, the basic currency in Foursquare is you've got this check-in, you know? And every time, you know, every time one of these check-ins goes out, there's a good chance a lot of them go to, a lot of them are going to Twitter. So you've got local merchants that are, you know, discovering Twitter search and searching for themselves and finding it there. Um, and then you've got a lot of these things that are going to Facebook too. You know, every time people are updating their status, it just it's another element that gets added to that stream. And you start adding this stuff up. You know, every time I check in, you know, that's a little mini ad that goes out to 10,000 different people, and most of them don't see it, but some of them do. And they're like, "What is this coffee place that Dennis is always going to? What is this pizza place that Josh is always checking into?" Um, and, you know, it's like I think venues are just starting to catch on to that, and we're playing a little, you know, we're kind of holding their hand through this process in terms of getting them kind of signed up for it. Uh, can I go for like two more minutes, Brady? Thanks, okay. I'm over the thing, but I got cheated a little bit in the beginning. So um, for Foursquare users, do you guys know what this badge is? 
Awesome, thanks. This is the swarm badge that you get for getting 50 people together in one spot, right? And we were like, why don't we build this just to see if it ever happens? Like, who knows if it ever happens? If we get 50 Foursquare users together, that's crazy. Um, and then we started seeing people do was, we, this is, you know, this burger place called AJ Bombers in either, it's either Atlanta or Milwaukee. Um, in Milwaukee, there it is. And, you know, th we see venues that are specifically throwing parties trying to get people together so that all the Foursquare users can earn the swarm badge at one particular time. And it's, again, like one of these completely un unanticipated things. And we're seeing it all over. Like, people are actually, like, sending us emails, like, we really want to have a swarm party. What do we do? It's like, I don't know, just get people there and have them check in. It just happens on its own. And so we see these, like, you know, these pictures on Flickr and these stories show up on Tumblr. Um, and it's just kind of happening all over the spot. And so we've talked to these, you know, the folks from AJ Bombers. And, we're, you know, they're, they're telling us and they're telling these other folks, like, if they promote items on Foursquare, like, they're seeing sales go up roughly 30%. So it's doing a great job at, like, generating some press for, uh, or generating some attention for their business, getting people there all together at once, creating some kind of social event out of it, and then getting some little rewards in return. Um, and so one of the things that we just started doing, this is actually the, the stats page that we've put together. So if you, you know, if you have a, a venue special in Foursquare, like if you're giving our users free hot dogs and free coffees and free pizza, we're going to give you an insight into some of that data. And so you can see this is their page where they had that swarm night and where they were off the charts over here with like 120 check-ins. And then it goes back to normal and they get some insight on like who their best customers and uh, you know, who, the, who the people are at the venue right now, some breakdown in terms of male, female, and... and, and um, you know, basic demographic information. And this is kind of like a very early version of this, but it's like Google Analytics for brick and mortar local businesses. And it's something that really hasn't existed before. And we, we're like, we talk to, you, to venues about this and they're getting super excited because they haven't seen these stats before. And they're finding that if they start taking, you know, these stickers and sticking them on their windows, 10 slides back, oh my God. Uh, you know, they're starting to get more data about it, then they can start cutting the data up and creating little promotions like this. And it's just like, it's new little tools for them to play with, and I think they're seeing there's some value there. Um, and of course, it gets a little bit bigger, like we cut this deal with Starbucks, where, uh, you know, initially it starts off with a badge, and then who knows, maybe it graduates into these coupons where, you know, if you're the mayor of a Starbucks, you've been here 10 times, you've brought 10 people here, if you're an expert at local coffee shops, then you're entitled to freebies. Um, and so there's a really good opportunity for us to be moving this stuff from like the very small mom and pop level all the way up. Um, I have like two more slides and I'm done. So I just want to talk about some of like the craziest stuff that we've been seeing recently. Like the, the check-in, I'm sorry, the, the marriage proposal that came in over, uh, over check-in. Like these people sitting across one another in the bar and this is how someone finds out about it. And it's kind of super nerdy and super cute at the same time, but you know, this is the point like you've crossed that tipping point where people get it and people are engaged in a different way. Um, this is a video that I'm not gonna have time to play. But you know, me and my buddy Tim, who's here, we were working late one night and we got this Skype video call from 200 users in a Chicago bar that wanted to sing happy birthday to Foursquare because it was our one-year anniversary. And it's, this is crazy. Like, they're there to get the swarm badge, and they're bragging about it in the little Flickr comment. But there's, like, there's something brewing here that's bigger than just like the badges and the local merchants and the check-ins and everything going to Twitter. It's like a, a, there's something just really interesting about what's going on. Um, and then one last thing is like, you know, we're, there was some talk about the trending data and like the, how people were using all these tools of South by Southwest this year. This is a screenshot I took of you know, the, really the way that people were navigating this the whole like South by Southwest social system, where people were jumping from, what do you got, like Buffalo Village, 325 people there, the parish, 216 people there. And this updates in real time. Every time you open the app, you see what the best party is, and if the party you're at isn't the one on the top of the list, everyone moves and goes to the next one. And it was like the tool that made it work this year, and it was totally, you know, just really coincidental that it worked out, but like we're seeing what a lot of the, a lot of the value that, that gets driven here. Um, last year, these are our stats. You know, we launched last March, and now we're, you know, we're going to hit a million users by the end of uh, you know, next couple weeks. We get 22 million check-ins. There's just like real numbers behind a lot of this stuff. And it's really interesting that like, everyone in this room is kind of getting involved in this game. And there's some real interesting opportunities for, for doing stuff with, um, with local merchants. Um, you know, I think one of the big turning points for us was like, when we turned on the API, and the API actually worked as advertised. Uh, and that's the thing that really kicked us into overdrive here. We've got you know, 60 different apps that people are building to do Foursquare stuff. You know, a lot of them are based on check-ins. All of them based on finding tips. All of them based on. I mean, there's dating networks that come out of them. There's, um, you know, there's just there's stuff that we would never imagine. And we're crossing that, that tipping point again, where the apps that other people are building are almost better than the apps that we're creating for, you know, for our own users. And so that's like an interesting point. Um, anyway, that's it. I ran a couple minutes over, but thank you so much. Uh, you can ping me on Twitter or hit me up with email with any of the questions. Thanks. <laughs>